Thank you for joining me for another Infinite Woman interview. I'm your host, Hannah Marshall, and today I'm talking to Rita Bukutsi, also known as Mama Rita Money. Let me tell you about her. Rita is CEO of Flourish Inc., safe money expert, leadership coach, and speaker. She is passionately committed to her mission of guiding and educating 5 million females and their families over the next five years around money. Her vision is to help people achieve financial peace of mind through money education and empowerment. She educates people with a holistic and transformational approach, connecting them with the purpose of their money and how to make, grow, and protect it. She has been featured on KTLA Morning News, the San Fernando Valley and Los Angeles Business Journal, Voyage LA, and an honoree Women in Business Most Inspirational Legislative Awards. She is a co-author of Wine, Women, and Wealth, Inspirational Stories of Women Who Got Their Financial Act Together, and 50 Empowering Wealth and Financial Mind Shifts. You can find her as a guest on podcasts and as a speaker at summits and conferences. Welcome, Rita. Thank you, Tana. I am so super excited to be here. Um, thank you for having me. And I look forward to this conversation. Me too. I'm so honored to have you here. I, I love you so much. And I have loved you ever since we met a few Thank years you. ago. And I trust you so much around this topic. So tell me, how did you first get involved in the world of finance? <laughs> uh, I think I've always been curious about money. And I think when people tell you, it's not for you. Something inside me says, I'll show you that it is. Whether I really think that I get to be on that pathway or not, there's just something that was innate in me that kept on wanting to pursue it. So despite going off, I don't want to say off track, on my own track, I kept coming back to it. And so as a young child, even in my early years, but then it was like, okay, I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be in healthcare. I'm a service girl. Mm -hmm. Money service didn't seem to be aligned until it was. Mm -hmm. And then when it was, it made sense. And when that happened, that was when actually the, the time frame that it happened was when I got sick, when I got cancer. And I've been in remission 13 years now. Yay. Yes, yes, yes. So I don't view it as a, um, I don't view it as a part of me. I, I view it as a part of my life. I like to tease and say where it kicked my assets and gears. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> you know, because sometimes we need that. Okay, I'll say a little nudge. But me, for me, it tended to be a kick, right? Mm-hmm so that this way I could share it with others because I've always wanted to be a teacher and most of us haven't learned around money. And I'm that girl that always was the first, you know, the first to go get married and have kids and find the preschool or find the wedding venue and then share it. Mm. So as I learned about money, which is vitally important to us, I was trying to figure out where I was going to learn about it. Yeah. And it was I was like, oh my goodness, you, you can't really find in education. And when I talk about, I forget about a holistic education. So for me, the holistic is, yes, we get to have our mindset. I, so because of the way things happened to me, and I was just searching money education anywhere, I stumbled into the arena of uh, money coaching, financial coaching. Mm -hmm. So then from there, I was like, okay, I had had my hand or my foot in the skill set piece, which is financial consulting. And then they started to align with one another. And that was, like I said, after I got cancer and then I got financial cancer and I vowed that I would never let another family go through what we went through because having to dip into your resources and sell your assets and and, and you don't even know, you don't know what questions to ask, which way to go. So it's an easy spiral downward. So what could I do? You know, I, we always, the proverbial, they should teach us, right? They should. And every time I said, well, they should teach us. I kept on saying, who's going to teach us? Who's they? Who's they? Who who's are they? they? <laughs> so they ended up being me. Yeah. Right. 
we get to figure out when that proverbial they becomes, hey, it's me. This is being put upon my heart, my mind. I want to protect my family, my sons, my friends, their kids, so on and so forth. You know, now more business owners, because there are things that are changing, especially for small business owners that we get to be aware of, and it doesn't have to be hard. Mm. And we get to learn empowering questions. So it started with getting financial cancer. Was, I, I was, love that. That was in my mid-40s, by the way. So yeah. I wasn't really young, but I'm also not really old, just seasoned enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're in the middle there. But and and I want to I want to get into that because I we're going to be talking about stuff relating to that that you offer. Mm -hmm. So I definitely wanted you to tell more of your story mm -hmm. because it's so relevant and it's so powerful. But just in general, I know you do a lot of work with women and their finances, which I love because it's so important. Women just aren't taught and you're one of the few that are self-taught and then helping other women. And I, you touched on this before. I love that you do a lot of work with mindset, you know, because that's what I focus on all the time, energy and mindset and beliefs, and that creates a reality. So it has so mm -hmm. much to do with our money and people don't always realize that. But on a more practical level, what are some strat strategies that you teach to reinforce confidence, to make better decisions and feel empowered around money? Mm, that's an amazing question. And I love that. So I love teaching with like the five A's or the five P's. So I say the five A's to ease with money. So first thing is that awareness, being aware, being conscious of what's coming to the forefront. Second piece is acknowledgement. So yes, you can be aware and you could just ignore it. Or you could take one step in, dip your toes and say, hey, yeah, I get to figure out where I am in my, I call it the FPS, the financial positioning system of my life. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean to me and how do I do it? Well, for it starts with that exploration. Awareness and acknowledgement is all part of exploration. I like to say we get to be children again, especially when it comes to money. We it, really, we get to be grade school because it wasn't explained to us this way. And it is this way. Money math is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Mm -hmm. We learned all that. and But it just wasn't called money math. And it might be algebra, which was junior high. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Susie has two apples. She gives Tana one. How many does Susie have left? Yeah. It's it's to be super simple in life. And all these basis for decisions starts with our core values. Mm -hmm. One of the things I ask in my classes very simply, and I ask your guests to ask themselves, is do you know what that your core values are? If you do, you're ahead of the game. Well, what's an example of a core value? Well, I'll tell I'll share mine. Okay. Love. Love mm -hmm. is a core value. Mm -hmm. If I do not feel loved or loving in a situation, then I'm done. Yeah, I say we have freedom within boundaries and our core values. My next one is wisdom. I call it my true north. That might be integrity or honesty. Mm -hmm. That keeps me on point. I like to think of a core value as a compass. So the center dial is love. Yeah. And then north is that wisdom, which is integrity and honesty and action. Because mm -hmm. I'm an action person. My right hand side is I'll fight for my Family, so my family gets to be that community. Community is a core value. Mm -hmm. uh, I love to tease and say that we're all related. And sometimes people think I'm crazy and that's okay because I'm crazy good and enjoy my life and get to have fun with all this. So we all, if you're in the U.S., you all have the same, we all have the same uncle. <laughs> that's so know, true. I think we well, can all agree we don't like giving him more than our fair share. <laughs> I know you're going to be talking about that too, but, th but that's true. And I, I, I'm glad that you said that because as soon as you said that, I thought, well, what are my core values? And I thought of love and people. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's very similar just in case people are like, I have no idea what my core values are. I just wanted you to give them an example. And they can Google. I'm all about like, Hey, starting out for free yeah, and then leveling up. Right. Mm -hmm. So your core values, 
why core values? I, I agree with the belief system, right? So it's your beliefs and your thoughts and your emotions and your actions and your habits and your character leading to your destiny. But I believe that's level two. Level one is getting those core values anchored in. So if by chance you come across a story that triggers you and sends you spiraling downward, you have a platform to land on. And you get to say, okay, my core value is love. Is what I'm doing loving for me and others? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. For me and others. You first. Because mm -hmm. if it's not, it doesn't matter if it's for others. Because if it's not for you, then it's not. Yeah. And for some people, that's sourcing, like for me, my faith base. I'm a God girl. And I honestly, if I had not had that faith base, I don't think you and I would be speaking today. I believe I'm a big believer in that we need to have something to believe in that something that supports us that is unchanging that is constant that is infinite so I told I love that you said you're a god girl I like that I'm a god girl too I like that <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really good. And and I feel like soul family is so important. And I feel like you, you, you have your family of origin and then you have your soul family and yep. we're all kind of part of the same soul family, but then we kind of pick and choose the people that we want closer. And that has a huge bearing on every part of our lives, especially our, our finances. Cause you just made me think Absolutely. of that saying that you are like the five people that you spend the most time with. So you our know, mamas I, weren't wrong. Our mamas weren't wrong. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't even have, I wasn't even planning on talking to you about that, but let me just ask you about that really quickly. Do you see that with people where people who really don't have a great financial situation and most of the people in their lives also don't have? 100%. Yeah. 100%. 100%. You will see them. People will reduce themselves to the friends that they want to stay hanging out with. Oh, yeah, yeah. They will do what do that. Do? What do we do, though? I mean, do we just go out and find rich friends? What do we do? <laughs> so, yes, sort of. Yes, yes and yes, actually. What you do is you start hanging out where whoever it is that you want to be most like financially, right? And I'm going to kind of go back to the learnings because for me, it's a rinse, repeat system. Once you get your core values down, you have those anchored in, you go through breaking your belief stories and you replace your focus. So this comes with focus. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to be most like? Maybe create an avatar of who you want to be like. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, I'm going to say people started calling me Mama, Mama Rita lovingly, but then I created a Mama Rita avatar of who I aspired to be so I could step into that role and then know that I am her so much so that yes, there's Mama Rita, but here is Rita Bukutsi standing for you. But as I stand for you, I stand for me. Mm -hmm. The focus gets to be really, really clear. So it's kind of like we have any kind of bad habits or not positive influences, we get to replace them with good ones mm -hmm. because there's you want to make sure that there's not going to be this empty void that you're just going to automatically fill by this is the easiest person to hang out with. So go to workshops, go see where those people are hanging out. If it's somebody that you know, and you might feel, get up the gumption or feel confident enough to go up and say, you know, I really would like to learn more about what you do because I really admire you. Would you ever um, have the opportunity to spend maybe 10, 15 minutes answering some questions or having a coffee with me and offer to pay for the coffee? You know, I'd like to treat. Um, a lot of times when you see people, when when good people see people in need and they want a level, a hand up, right? Not a handout. Mm -hmm. They'll do it. Yeah. I find yeah. wealthy as I get into this leveling of different levels of wealth, the higher up I go, honestly, the more uh, support, the more offerings I get, either guidance or, or tools given, they might give you a tool, it might not be them. Or they might give you a course. And as we align our values and our stories of who and what we want to be, and then we hone in and focus, and we keep on repeating those patterns, that's just the exploration pattern, mm, right? So you're just yeah. exploring like a kid. And it does. It just starts showing up where those people that you want to be most like show up. Like, you want to be wealthy? 
you know, I, I'm going to say, you know, whoever that person is, like, maybe you can't go ask Beyonce, you know, she's a billionaire, but start <laughs> with what's real, realistic. Start with who's in your closest community. It might be somebody that has wisdom, that's elderly, that's built a business and a practice that you love, or, um, you know, even somebody who's doing a stay at home work, whatever the work is that's connected to you, just start asking. Mm. That's the other thing that women tend to not do as much. Ask, be direct. Don't be, don't be blunt and abrupt, Yeah, but be direct. You know why? Being direct saves time mm -hmm. for you, them. And so you can be kind and loving in your direct question is like, wow, I really love what you're doing. Is there any way you could give me one piece of advice or one step or 10 minutes of your time or five minutes, I promise I'll be fast and succinct and have my questions for you ready because I value your time. Show that you value how you value them too. Mm -hmm. And usually it's reciprocated. Uh, that's such a great suggestion. And, and what I think is also important is surrounding yourself with like-minded people who have the same aspirations and because yes. I, I have a friend who is also a partner and we do a lot of visualizing together and positive what ifs, what what if, you know, up leveling, that kind of thing, okay. as if things are happening right now. Or we plan for things that we expect to be coming to us financially, success wise, business wise. So I think it's important to surround yourself with people who feed your dreams, you feed their dreams on the way up there in addition to reaching out to the people in the way that you suggested who might already be where you want to be. So that's I really love, great. I love that you pointed that out because if you can find somebody that can help hold you accountable, accountability partners, the right kind, like-minded, getting in groups or circles, like listening, you know, start by listening to podcasts, find out where that person is, Find out where they're showing up. Maybe show up where they show up. Mm -hmm. You know, be in the environment they're in because they got there for a reason. They're in that environment for a reason because it serves a like purpose. And if you can have a friend go along with you and a new BFF that's like-minded, it makes it so much more fun. And you'll be surprised that you achieve more than you ever have before because a lot of times people can see in us the greatness in us, the brilliance in us that sometimes we can't see in ourselves and they bring it out. And that's who you want to be, you know, accountable with, with not to necessarily. It's you're accountable together. And, you know, we all have gifts. If you're giving back to them and supporting them, it just is reciprocal. I've had my accountability partner now for mm, 12 years. Wow. Same. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed, has been the best one ever. And he saw me from when I was broke and I just had this dream that nobody else could understand in me when I talked about, spoke about it and he could see it for me. Yeah. Oh, that's so important. And that's yeah. nice. You need someone, if not one, if you have more than one, that's great. People who see like what you said, seeing you, what you can't see in yourself or that you want to see in yourself, but you're wondering, is it really there? is that really who I am? Am I really capable of that? And when you have people around you who are like, oh, yeah, of course I see it. I see it in you. There's nothing like that. I love where this is going. I didn't even anticipate this, but this is, this is so important. And you know what? You do that for people with what you do. Um, but let me, let me ask you one of the things I wanted to know, what is the most common mistake you see with your clients when preparing for their financial future, regardless of where their financial, what their financial status is in the moment? I'm going to say probably, I'll say possibly three things. The first one is really knowing the purpose of your money. It's actually going to be a few. Okay. Understanding what's the purpose of your money. Um, and balancing that out. Is it your day-to-day -day for your, your expenses? What's this mid period? Because there's really just three phases. It gets to be really easy. This mid period of life, you know, the next five to 10 years and then 10 years and beyond and planning. How many of us are planning for our lifetime income streams, our perpetual lifetime? We can, 
We get to do that from now. When you do that, you do receive it. The other is a lot of times, ugh, one of the biggest things that I see is people having a hard time breaking up with their current financial professional that is not serving them. Yeah. That is yeah. losing them money and charging them fees. And they don't, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm-hmm. Women have a problem with that. Not just women, <laughs> but really? women for dogs. Wow. Not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, trust me, I was surprised too. Uh, people feel loyalty to people, but I want you to remember you are the CEO of your company. Mm-hmm. Whatever your name is, that is your household business name. Every household gets to be a business because you have income coming in and expenses going out. And when you are working with financial professionals, they are your employees. You are paying them a fee. And if they don't have a portfolio that is, and, and when I say portfolio, we don't mean a whole lot of money. You, We all have a portfolio, big or small, whatever it is. It is vitally important to you and whoever should be, you should be honoring it so that it will grow and watering it as well as the person that's helping you. The biggest thing I see is a lot of people believe in this myth of you got to risk it to make it. Mm. And that when you diversify, you only diversify to protect the downside. What people are missing out on is diversifying in the upside, passive upside growth of their money. And most people, I'm sure when I say that, they're probably going, what does she mean by that? <laughs> and the reality is we get to learn what that means. So you're going to have to read and be part of a, uh, you know, uh, meetups or just start going and learning about it and no commitments. Meaning when somebody pressures you, because I see this too, if you're feeling pressured or pushed or it's too much for you, you either get to speak up or you get to move away. Mm -hmm. Help that person get aligned with you because they may not, they may be passionate. I'm a passionate person and I can see things for people before they might be able to see it for themselves. And it might be a little scary because you're like, is that really possible? And I understand that because I'm living, I'm going to say, I call, I'm living my best life ever, earning more income than I ever have in my lifetime and traveling and taking more vacations than I ever dreamed possible while doing that, which is amazing. And I want other people to be able to achieve that because I believe no matter who you are, where you are, that is possible, but you do get to see the beginning steps to to the flow that creates you into like literally achieving everything that you want and beyond. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was also going to ask you, I feel like this kind of is leading into this. Is there a way to create a passive income stream that is tax-free and without risk of market loss? Absolutely. I love that you asked that. That's a fun one, right? Look at, look at you. See, when we get together, we start learning about things that get to be actually the norm for our lives. And like I said earlier, if you do not want to pay more than your fair share to Uncle Sam, you get to learn about what's possible. I always talk about being a poss- possibilitarian. Oh, I like what? that. Yeah. Poss- I didn't coin it, but I love it and I embrace it. What's possible in that positive? Like your what ifs, that's what it is. What is possible? And that actually is a question you should be asking every time. Uh, When you're meeting with a financial professional, you get to know how they get paid. Is it fee-based? Are they having to meet a quota? Because if you don't think every piece of those factors make a decision in what they present to you, they do. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's the right fit, it's the right fit. And that's good. It doesn't matter. It's not good or bad, but you do get to understand each aspect and you get to ask these empowering questions just like you did. Imagine creating a tax-free lifetime income stream that is passive, possible for every single one of them. You know, one of the cool things, if you're a mom, a grandma, I got to set this up, what I call a million dollar baby plan for my grandson. You know, what gift to be able to give and change generational the legacies that happen and how we're educated around money and then how we use it and how we get to use and keep more of our money because it is ours unless we let somebody else have it 
And I don't know how many of you are wanting to let somebody else have your retirement income. And I say somebody else, it could be, it could be that you like, I'm a, a smoothie girl, but I'll only let them have so much of my retirement plan. Well, that's good. I never thought of it that way. That's a really interesting way to think about how you spend your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's a little trick. And I'm like, hmm, their retirement or mine? Oh, God. My it. trip or theirs? Disneyland owns my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people's retirement. <laughs> Although you are living a pretty fun life. And it's like, okay, what's the balance of the trade off? Yeah. Right. That's all. And you get to balance that out for what feels right. But if you're feeling like, oh, I'm doing too much and you're asking yourself that question, and that's coming up in your mind. You know what the answer is already, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The answer might be yes. Mm -hmm. So what would make you feel sure or secure that it's not? Like what has to be in place so that it's not? It's that kind of questioning mm -hmm. of yourself. Yeah. And if you're wondering why you're doing it, you get to ask yourself, am I emotionally spending? Mm -hmm. And oh if so, God. why? We're all good. What's like that. feeling? <laughs> right? Is this a need or want now? Or where would this be better served? And you get to sleep on those questions because as you do, answers will come to you. You will know the answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dev I think we all know, but sometimes we're like, la, 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 la. <laughs> you know, but we are we, quite we intuitive. <laughs> We are quite intuitive creatures. We do know, like a lot of people with the breaking up, you know, breaking up's hard to do. I've heard a song like that before. <laughs> um, we, <laughs> the big dramatic um pause there is if we're doing that, we get to say, I get to take charge of my finances. I get to take leadership. I can pause about this. I get to think about this and I get to take steps to implement this. And sometimes we need somebody to talk to a sounding board. Like you. If you start asking people that are more broke than you, you're probably not going to get the right answers. Oh, no, 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 no. There, there are people that I've known that think that they're financial whiz and their finances are horrible. <laughs> I'm not listening to you. I'm going to do the opposite of way. Like I have better sense than they do, but they still think they know more than I do. But, yeah. but I wanted to get back. So, sure. so is what you're saying when we are more conscious with our money, we have more to invest and then there's more potential to have that positive income stream. And where does the yes. tax-free part come in? So the tax-free part comes in is learning about instruments. So, you know, once you move from the mindset, you move into the skill set. We start to learn, I actually say our money love languages of what that means. Like sometimes Disneyland is gifts, right? You love to have gifts. Some people are service oriented. Some want to hear words of affirmations about being smart and wise with their money. So the tax free actually is after the phases. It's a principle around money where you get to implement and set up products that are aligned with that. And there are only a few really. Uh, there's actually only two types of tax-free instruments. There's a Roth IRA mm -hmm. and there's what's called a tax-free indexed account. Mm -hmm. And that can come in the form of uh, it's backed by a life insurance company. So sometimes people think life insurances are for when you die. However, wealthy people, it's not about when they die. It's about how you live and then utilize those resources today, now, while you're building them tax-free. And there's an instrument that gets to be um, structured as such. And if you don't have a financial professional that is an expert in that, it just might not happen the right way for you. And I do see that as well. And so how do you know? Well, you start talking to safe money experts. You need to ask people, are you, do you have expertise in safe money? Safe, secure, sustainable, stable, your four S's. It's so fun that the words get to be like the same, almost the same letter, you know, almost like an alliteration, yeah. but it, it gets to be when they say safe, it cannot be safer or safest. Just safe. The word gets to be safe. Yeah. Guaranteed safe. Yeah. So understanding those little nuances are really important so that this way, you know, the person behind 
so to say, the computer that's putting all this together knows how to do it. And I'm, I'm going to share some vulnerability. I was in the industry seven years and did not know how to do that. Was never trained. And we're talking eight different companies in seven years because I felt like I wasn't learning what I was supposed to learn until I found a company that I could be an affiliate with, that I could hang my license with, that uh, we could get this learning done in a year, literally, and then now forever be able to structure these for people in the bestest, in the bestest, in the best way <laughs> for them with their best interest at heart. So this is why it goes back to what's the purpose of your money? Is the purpose the day to day? Is the purpose in the next five to 10 years or for that travel plan? Or is it to create that tax free lifetime income stream? And what is available to you? Because the Roth IRA has this is the one that's most known, but it also has limitations. Mm -hmm. So not everybody qualifies. So then you get to see what else is possible. That's the question. What else is possible? Now, not every financial professional has this in their wheelhouse. You do. I do. Yeah. I do. I want people to be aware of that because I have experienced personally with clients. Sometimes I go with elder clients to their financial professional because they feel like they're not getting the answer. And I'm not all about one side or the other. I'm that safe money expert. I want to make sure that part of your portfolio is happening because one of the biggest misses is a lot of times when I look at people's portfolios, they're hundred percent at risk. So why is their financial professional doing that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, now, you're an ally. You're an ally for people. Yes. I mean, but, but me, I chose to just put all my money where it is with you because I know it's safe. And that's something I, if people are curious about it, they should definitely get in touch with you. And we're going to have all your contact information there because it's a really great way to invest your money because it is safe. <clears throat> and Oh God, there's so many things I want to talk. I'm like, I want to talk about this and I want to get about that. So my, my brain is going all over the place right now and we won't be able to cover everything that you do here or we will be here for several hours, which is why people can learn about your events, which we're going to get to in a second. But the thing I do want to touch on, because I know this is very personal to you and this is super important and valuable. I know you're a big proponent of living benefits in life insurance. So tell, tell us about that and why it's important. Living benefits. Well, I want everybody to remember you are the most valuable asset in the world. You are priceless. No one can replace you. If you are gone, it doesn't matter what's happening with the money. It doesn't matter. But while we're living, we do require money coming in and we are the leaders of our as income producing assets and we guide our assets. So living benefits is protecting you even if you're single, as the financial household, from things like heart attack, cancer, and stroke, losing a limb, going into coma, burns, an accident, Alzheimer's, dementia. These are all things that are very common. I'm sure if I said it, you either had it or you know somebody that has in your life. Yeah. So for me, it was me. So this is very personal. And I really started learning about living benefits because somebody told me about, hey, you got to find out about this living benefits stuff and just do it. Well, Rita's not the just do it girl. Rita's the research it girl. Mm -hmm. And I did. And it only took me about six months to research it. I was 43 years old and a soccer mom, healthy, healthy eater, jogged, you know, exercised every day, jogged regularly. And I get hit with cancer. It blew not only my mind, but everybody in my circle, they could not believe it. But the thing that I ended up focusing on and our family ended up focusing on was our finances, because all of a sudden I couldn't work. Mm -hmm. My husband had just recently transitioned into a new sales job, so he wasn't on the sales floor. So that meant no money coming in. Mm -hmm. It took about three to four months. And I hear that the average is about four months for disability to kick in. So what are you going to do for those first four months when no money is coming in and you need to have treatment? And oh, by the way, the treatment isn't covered by insurance and you have to pay cash up front or you'll die. Mm -hmm. Nobody deserves to be positioned with these things. Nobody deserves to have to do a GoFundMe when you can go fund yourself. Mm -hmm. 
right? You can set up plans that will pay you. And I'm not talking about receipts from hospital visits or anything like that. I'm talking about a lump sum payout that would make a difference, like did with one of my one youngest clients who was 27 when she got stage three breast cancer and she was living on her own. Who was going to pay her bills while she wasn't working? So she set up a plan, only had it a year. Now these plans go into effect pretty much immediately. And she spent such a small amount, we'll say she spent in the hundreds, but received the tens of thousands of dollars deposited into her account. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for me, this was one story. My vow was if I could change people's lives, one person's life, I could close my eyes and say, I have served well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, fortunately or unfortunately, I've been able to be there for over six of my clients, now seven this year. Yeah. You know, when three of them got COVID hit, their jobs shut down and they got cancer, all in one fell swoop. Where was the money going to come from? Mm -hmm. Some of them had savings, but some of them had to do, like some of them, you don't want to have to do what I had to do, change homes. Uproot your kids, focus on your finances, try and work while you're sick. Mm, yeah. Or your spouse is trying to work while they're trying to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Deplete every resource you have and other people's resources because other people bandwidth, and, and it's a beautiful gift that others give, but how much more empowering, and as my client said, like the air you breathe, <gasps> you feel relief and empowerment. So do you go through your treatment in disparity or with hope and a vision for what's possible on the other side of it? That's such a huge part of it. Huge. Your mental state mm -hmm. has everything to do with your health and affects you. So if there is something that can provide that relief, while you were trying to get well, that's huge. It's huge. And everybody has the opportunity to at least look at it. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but see if it's the right thing for you. Protect what you've worked so hard to put together. Protect your health because you are worth every, not fiber of your being in life because we're priceless. Dollars don't match what we are worth ever and can never but helping have things sustain your livelihood your day-to-day -day for each breath you take and those cells functioning through you that's priceless mm -hmm. and we all get to do it we all get to have that opportunity for whoever is listening and living benefits aren't the same everywhere i always say the divine is in the details don't go looking for the devil you'll find him <laughs> if you want him but I like looking for divinity because divinity is about enlightenment and understanding the differences. This is where empowerment lies. And then you elevate to that next best level. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep rinse repeating whenever you get to that next best. What's the next best thing that's possible? And the next best thing that's possible. And you just keep moving forward. I don't think that, I don't want to say, I don't think that we ever make it. We make it to a certain level and then we get to make it all over again. Because mm -hmm. once you get to the top of wherever you're going, then you get to have new, new ideas and new, I call them like contracts of wins of what you're going to accomplish in this life. Oh, I like that contracts of wins. And you know, that's interesting that you pointed that out because whether it's dealing with a, as one of my mentors says, a health opportunity or yeah. a financial goal or a professional goal or a personal goal. Sometimes we reach that and we're like, yay. And then there's that anticlimactic thing. And one of the things I've learned from my studies in law of attraction and Abraham Hicks, there's always something else. So it's kind of fun to think of it that way that yes, you want to achieve this thing, whatever it is on that list. And then no, there's going to be something else, probably bigger and higher. So you always have some, and that's one of my things too, always have something to look forward to. And it could be a goal where you are aiming higher and higher and higher, and you're helping people do that on so many levels. So th thank you for touching on that and sharing your story and how important this is. And I really want people to reach out to you with their questions. 
but but I have one thing I want to ask you, and then I want to get into all the things that you do offer. So what is one piece of financial advice you would give to anyone and specifically women watching this? Ask questions. It really is about asking the questions. Be confident enough to know that you are boss. The other person on the other side of the desk has no control unless you give it to them. So ask what's possible. Ask what, if you don't know what your purpose is, start asking yourself before you go to sleep at night, what is my purpose, dream, and vision? And I can kind of help that along. What is the intention of my life? What I, I intend, what is the collateral goodness I want to share and leave as a legacy with the world? Ask these empowering questions. Ask what's possible. I, that's really the number one thing. I love that. And I love that you said co collateral Good, is goodness. It collateral goodness? Collateral goodness. I love that. What a great term. I, collateral goodness instead of the other. I'm not even going to say it, what we usually hear. It's the, ripple, it's the ripple effect that we leave in the world. Yeah. Right? We could leave damage behind or we can leave goodness behind. And it's that collateral, right? Collateral goodness mm -hmm. that works, integrates together. Uh, I'm going to share one thing because it's coming to my mind is I think of this, I call it a money accumulation pathway system. And it's not your what you think it is. It's first you get to set your intention. What's your intention? What's your vision? Start dreaming again. Start dreaming and start dreaming big. Big, 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 big. You can have your small ones and your mid-level ones because that's where you manage your expectations, right? You start with what's achievable, what's next that you can accomplish, and then what's audacious? What's the big, big, scary, crazy, audacious People think you're crazy when you say it. Like I say, I want to educate 5 million fabulous females and their families and friends in the next five years. Do you think if I get to a million, which is my mid goal, I'll be sad or 500,000, which is my low goal, which I know is achievable. That one I think we'll be able to do in a year. But yeah. so we get to just create. And I didn't know how, by the way, you do not need to know how. We don't know how that's not. That's the domain of the universe. Yeah. And ideas will start to pop up. I'm just letting you know, there are things that have been being dropped into the visualization of my mindset that I'm like, ooh, and it gets to be fun. How can it be fun? Yeah. Because we don't want it to be boring. Life is too short for it to be boring. So once you have set your intentions, manage your expectations, your mission, that's your mission, then we need to connect and contribute via our conviction. What do you feel convicted? What will you like? You're going to stand on. I don't want to say die on stand <laughs> up for it, no matter what mm -hmm. anybody tells you your, your answer is no, this is the way it is. This is the way it is in your world. Cause that is your calling. And then start meeting people in community that are like-minded, like we talked about earlier and connect and collaborate. That's a perfect segue because I want people to know that you do a lot of events always to inform and share your wisdom, which obviously they can see you have a lot here and, and, and you have so much love and compassion and, and genuine desire to help people achieve their dreams and elevate their expectations for themselves. So my favorite one is wine, women, and wealth. I love that. <laughs> but you are doing in-person and virtual events continuously. I am. Right? I am still because I still find that people are still some people are tired of Zoom land and they want to get out. And there are those that are still comforted by Zoom land and are not ready to get out. And I believe that everybody should have something offline as well as online in life. You don't know what your schedule is. So I do my Wine Women Wealth online as well as off. I do It's No Secret to Be Wealthy. These are money 101 workshops, basic principles around money. And I always believe that we get to connect our mindset to our skill set to get to our heart set in life. I have some different two day or three day coaching sessions like my money master classes, which delve a little bit deeper. And it is all about serving and helping one another elevate because I know that look, if if an Italian, a, a young girl of Italian immigrants uh, who struggled with her grades in elementary school had to stay up late nights uh wasn't great at math, but got to be amazing at it. And I'm going to share it. And to have the hiccup 
I'm going to call it a hiccup, bump in the road, whatever you want to call it. When I had chemotherapy, I had a, got a condition called chemo brain. And from chemo brain, I didn't even know what it is, what it was till it hit me. I was having a lot of memory loss, like blackout. Didn't even know my name at one point. Wow. Could not remember it. Uh, what you get to do is keep working at how, how, what's, again, the what's possible. This is what's got me through everything is like, what do I need to learn? If I got to learn math again, I got to learn one plus one, two plus two. I partnered up with somebody. And when we work together, I would just listen. And when they would get to the math portion, I would do the math on my paper. Or And then I started trying to do it, practice it in my head, just like I had to remember my name. Yeah. So you just practice, 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 elevates you. Think about athletes that win awards. Mm -hmm. People that are in dance contests, what are they doing? People in figure skating, athletes, what are they doing? Repetition, repetition, repetition. So you don't have to be good at it first. Usually we suck at whatever we want to do first yeah. and then we get to pretty good and then we get to better and then we get to best and then we get to brilliant. And so it's just phases like when a baby, we hear it, starts to crawl, right? They start to scoot and then they crawl and then they stand and then they walk and then they run. We are all children forever. We're in bigger bodies, <laughs> bigger brains, hopefully. And we just get to take those steps and be kind to ourselves. Don't be that critic that holds you back. Yeah. Oh, that's such that's, a valid point because we're so mean to ourselves. A lot of like, oh, self, you know, criticism. We get to love it, right? That's why core values is so important. Core values help kick the butt of my, my personal critic, mm -hmm. my financial critic, who said, who do you think you are, Rita? And now I'm at the top. I'm in the top leaders of my industry winning awards all because I stayed in the game, stay in the game of life, start practicing what you love. Just keep repeating, keep learning, keep exploring, be a child, yeah. learn. Children are tenacious. Mm -hmm. They are consistent, persistent, and resilient in order to receive what they want. All the people that you just mentioned, one thing that's really valuable with all of them is a lot of them visualize their success before they get there. They do the yes. practical steps of practicing, practical mm -hmm. practicing, but then they mm -hmm. visualize, they visualize shooting the hoop or playing the instrument or whatever. And that's one of the things that I've done for years is I already know how I will spend my big money. I know exactly where it will go because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I just want to win the lottery. But a lot of people don't know how to spend that money or how to invest it or what to do with it so that they're being responsible so that it's not gone in two years, which is the average people are broke within two years of winning the lottery. Yep. So someone like you can help them with that too. But I just wanted to point out that everything you said as, as far as practicing the mental and visualization aspect is so important as well. Because when you when you feel it, that helps you get there faster too. Yeah, I call it that's that's what I was calling the dreaming piece. And it is. It's the visualization of the intention of the dream that you wish to achieve. And only you have that dream. So don't worry about if anybody else doesn't understand you. Trust me, people did not understand me for years. Yeah. And in my current circle, they don't always completely understand that they see me moving forward and are supportive in that. And that's okay. Yeah. And so you get to dream to achieve what you want. By the way, I was going to tell you the consistency, persistency, and resiliency is CPR, which is the breath of life. Oh, that's so good. Oh, so you get to receive your dream by showing up, right? And the way you show up, I, I couldn't visualize in the beginning, just so you know, just in case there's anybody out there. I sat in my first, wherever I heard about visualization, I was like, what is happening? And how come... All these people seem like they know what they're doing and I don't know. So I just sat there and I thought, okay, I'm going to try and, you know, visualize the sky and the clouds at least just to get at least to that, because we know what sky and clouds look like. And if you, in your head, you can just kind of know what that is and you just start practicing and practicing presence, quiet your mind. We have so many distractors and that's why we don't know which way to go because 
lottery people. You know how many people come out of the woodworks for those poor individuals? Because they have not done what's called purposely leveraged action. And that action starts today. So if you plan on win winning those millions, today I want you to take out a pen and paper because yes, you get to think it in your mind, but you get to do a documented declaration, a contract with yourself by writing it. Typing isn't the same thing. Write it because it is that neuro connection so that you change the pathways of your brain to easily, right? So visualization wasn't an easy pathway. And now I, I don't even need to close my eyes to do the visualization because I literally can see it in front of me as I talk. It's almost like another virtual realm in front of me. Yeah. Like you yeah. see on TV when they do those other realm. It, it's like that. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Wealthy people, there are just a few common threads of things that happen. They continue getting educated. Well, first they keep on dreaming. They keep on getting educated. They hang out with the right people. They keep on exploring more of what, what's possible. What's next? What's my next best move? What's the next right move? Uh, definitely the affirmations and mantras are things that support their supportive values. I call them values. They're supportive instruments that support our values in where we want to go. And as we are strengthened in our values, no one can knock you off course because now you have a definitive. When someone does something that is out of, definitely love is usually the one. When I feel somebody is not being in a loving mode, I either get to step away temporarily if it's something minor or if it's something that is not aligned with my purpose and vision and mission, if they're not, it's not the right person for you. That's why there's so many people in the world. You get to choose and choose wisely. These are people that can either be your gifts or your demise. They can get you to your destiny or they can get you to disparity. You choose. There are so many amazing nuggets in this interview. <laughs> I'm going to have to be pulling it in this interview. You will learn like they're going to, it's going to be the longest list because this is so amazing. And I'm so grateful that you're sharing all of this information and resources. So where can people learn more about you, your services and events and join you in one of your workshops or whatever, or whatever if they want to work with you? The main place is my website, achievefinancialaspirations.com. Here. Or they or they can go to Rita at Rita Bakutsi is my Instagram handle. And there's a link tree in the bio and you can just click it and all the current events are on either of those two places. You know, message me on Facebook. It's also, I believe, in my bio of Facebook, LinkedIn. So I'm predominantly in those areas. Reach out. Uh, on our website, I think that there's a... Uh, 20 minute discovery call for free. Oh, so, great. okay. Well, all we those links are going to be down below. Start asking the questions. And if you don't know what questions that you want to start asking, then it all starts with a conversation so that we can do discovery together when some, an individual outside of you can objectively, that, that would be me, be able to start to ask you questions, the same questions I asked myself along the way, so that we can start to to retrieve that out of you. Okay, I I hope people get in touch with you because this has been so inspiring. And I just wanna thank you so much for being here and sharing your wealth of wisdom and knowledge because it really is a wealth of wisdom and your, your beautiful heart. It's so, so amazing. I'm so blessed to know you and be connected with you and have you supporting me with my finances. You're just an amazing person, Rita. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you because this is the prime example of what collateral goodness looks like in the world mm -hmm. and the ripple effect you will have, you will never know. And it will be amazing and going on in perpetuity. So in forever. And so I'm thankful for this gift and you allowing me to share in and partake in this gift. So thank you so much, Tana. Well, Rita, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. 
And My thank pleasure. all of you for watching and joining us today. I'll be back with more inspiring interviews with amazing women. So remember to subscribe here on YouTube. And if you'd like to join the community and get free resources to support your self-care, jump over to my website, tannamarshall.com, and take the self-care boundary quiz to find out how well you prioritize your well-being, or maybe not, and sign up to be notified about upcoming events and programs. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Yeah.